Thanks for staying with us. A federal high court in Port Harcourt has issued an order uh, to prevent the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, from releasing the allocation of funds to River State. This ruling came in response to a suit filed by the River State government, which argued that the CBN's decision to allocate funds was made without proper consultation and could adversely affect the state's finances. The court's intervention underscores ongoing tensions regarding financial allocations between federal and state governments, emphasizing the need for adherence to legal procedures in funds distribution. Our guest this morning is Dr. Omoshola Deji, political scientist. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Mm. Okay, well, here we are, River State, no more allocations to them because of the skirmishes that we are experiencing or the state is experiencing. And uh, I don't know the way forward for River State or what that portends to our democracy and uh, the um, independence of the state. Well, uh, it portends serious danger for the state and I am very calm. Uh, confused as regards uh, the role of the judiciary in a democracy because what we know, what we read, um, historically and even uh, theoretically, is quite different from what is happening in Nigeria. The role of the judiciary is to um, interpret the law, to um, state how things should be, and not just to do justice for justice to have been seen, to have been done. So, I want to um, imagine that when the state exists for the citizens and people within its jurisdiction, and you want to stop allocation to a whole state, just because you think that a man hasn't complied with something, one man, one man, imagine, compared to the millions of people in Liberty, and that's why they are constitutional provision whereby if you feel that one man has committed an infraction that's why there are um, investigation checks and balances um, impeachment just so that you will not use the sin of one man to rob it on the state but when you do such a judgment like that it kind of like creates a kind of confusion about the role of the judiciary itself imagine uh, it is the same judiciary that will stop the police from participating in an election. And we will imagine that the police are there to protect life and property. So, if no matter the kind of justice that you want to see, if you stop the police from participating in an election and the election goes on, what if there's a breakdown of law and order, knowing the kind of you know, um, winner takes all, you know, do or die democracy that we tend to happen? So the role of the judiciary is becoming very questionable in the sense that the judiciary is not only setting this food, it is, it is not dictating how um, Nigeria will be led. In the sense that, if you look at it, the, the Nigerian judiciary even gave a judgment that goes against the constitution itself. And I have argued as a political scientist that no, you the judiciary, you cannot consult the power of the legislator. You cannot. It is, it is not done anywhere. What you can do is to lie out, and that's why there should be a, a kind of like a um, cordial relationship between the three arms of government in such a way that the law will be amended. And when it is amended, that oh, the state can no longer take the um, uh, allocation of the local government. But so far, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, rightly or wrongly, states that the state can receive this allocation. And you, your job is to interpret the law, not to interpret. You are to interpret what is in the Constitution. So if you now say that no, which is true ruling against the Constitution before you said, that means that you are putting over the power of the legislature. So the, the, the judiciary now is now teaching, is now teaching Nigeria and everyone how to govern. That is not democracy. The judiciary is usurping the power of the executive and the Legislature itself, and that is what I call a judicatory, a judicatic system of government. And I have a pattern that in the history of Nigeria, what we had is military intervention in politics. That is, aside the war 
the democracy that we had before 1999 was military intervention. But this time around, by the time this democracy that we are practicing currently will be done, what would our ruling may be overbearing judicial intervention at the end of the day? It may not be military. It may be an overbearing judicial intervention whereby some judgment will be given. And people will revolt against it, will revolt so violently that at the end of the day, the democracy itself may end up collapsing. So you cannot stop allocation to a state. And see, and that's why I wonder the kind of people we have in the judiciary. Nigeria operates a monoproduct economy dependent on oil. We are an oil producing country. We earn most of our money from oil. And River State is one of the uh, oil producing country in Nigeria, it's one of the lucrative oil producing countries. There's, there's an oil in River State called sweet crude. Sweet crude is one of the best forms of food in the world that uh, oil multinationals look for because it is easier to refine and you tend to get more from it. It's called sweet crude. Now, River State have that in large quantity. Most of all these multinationals, Shell, Texaco, Algi, Prota, they operate in River State. By implication of that, Nigerian government that have perpetrated the resources on the ancestral land of the Niger Delta people into a national affair, the Nigerian government spending millions of dollars every day from River State and other uh, Niger Delta states. So you want to tell me that you will any money every day from their state and the money that you are earning from that state will go to the federal court and that money will not get to you. The little to say, don't forget that if you end maybe um, 100 naira from River State, by the time they are going to share it, maybe River State will end up getting maybe 5 naira or, or 6 naira out of the 100 naira you end from their state. So what you are now telling the River people is that we are going to earn money from the state, but the end of the state, you do want that we have to We won't even give you. Because why? Um, if you that your governor is not doing the right thing or has not done the That is the recipe for, for crisis in a state whereby there are existing militants. I have done scientific research in the Niger Delta before. It is a state whereby there are some places that you go to. You see everybody's men. When they wake up in the morning, they are just sitting under the street. They don't have jobs. Their environment is polluted. They are idle and And these are not the usual adjuries that you see. These are not adjuries. These are guys that, you know, they grew up in Batu to steal um, as you said that Kaboro mysteriously right in their presence. You you executed the Sarowiwa, you know, right in their presence. So this guy has been used to seeing violence and there's nothing you want to think that they are not ready for because their mind has been configured in such a way that, you know, um violence is means nothing to them. That kind of thing. The judiciary that they supposed the people that did that, that judge, judge um, the, the Justice Judge Abdumali, is a Nigerian. You can't say that you are not aware by your virtue of position and age of the um, um, violent historical antecedents of River State. And you gave such a judgment at a time whereby the state is not even prepared. It is towards the end of the month. Whereby they will be sharing allocation, both with people, the state, because of that is not done because the, 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 the constitutional structure the state is such a way that even if Bara dies today, governance must go on. The people must not be affected. If Bola Mexico dies now, governance must go on in Nigeria. Okay, but so, uh, uh, while while we are while, while we agree while we agree that um, it may not be constitutional and uh, it, they, they may have faulted uh, in so many ways. Uh, one of the arguments, if not the major one or the only one, is the fact that uh, the River State Governor presented a budget to a House of Assembly uh, that is not supposed to be a complete House. Four-member House of Assembly is what uh, uh, Governor Fubara uh, presented the budget to. And there is another parallel House of Assembly which is, um, well, loyal to the FCT minister, but is still recognized because they have not been sacked by law. Um, at least uh, they still believe that, and that is still the argument. So because of that, they are saying that you cannot release money to someone who is going to present it to an incomplete house. They have run against the law. 
And that was the argument. So don't you think they had a point when they, they argued like, like that? Thank you for that question. Uh, as a political scientist, I will not support the situation where price prevents the budget to just four people. That is not democracy. But in this case, Tubara is not wrong. And I repeat, Tubara is not wrong. Because the people that are true members, and that is the problem I have with the judiciary. And I can give you a lot of instances that the Nigerian judiciary have given some judgment, some political judgment that you want to imagine that what is going on. And like, the judges, are they from math? You know, are they from, you know, um, to, where are they from? Are they not Nigerians? Don't they see all this public evidence everywhere? Look at the case of Imo State. You know, how do you rationalize number four to become number one? If it's not done, where is number two? Where is number three? Are they dead? If they, even if they are dead, don't they have a political party? See, the only reason why I, I kind of like, um, tilt towards the Kubara side is that these pro wicked guys, you can't. You know that, um, one of the things that I do most is policies, um, public affairs, current affairs. I don't miss any major thing in the news. So the day they come, I mean, this is where I saw it. It was all over the place. It was being reported all over the media space. The media were there. They interviewed some of them. It was an unfortunate issue on that particular day. If they become and the vote belongs to the political party, not the candidate. Going by the judgment, the, the, the past judgment of the Supreme Court itself. And these people have the camp. When they become, you cannot say that, oh, uh, um, you have no longer the camp again. And you go to the court. You see, that is the problem that we have. You know, I said, those things must be true to have been done. It's Nigeria, it seems to appear that it belongs to the kid that you, 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 you have before things work in your favor or not. And that is very sad. So, to me, I will not support presentation of the project to a poor member. But in this case, the only valid, um, the valid lawmakers are just four people. So, what you need to look at is what is the quorum of four? When four is the valid number, what is the quorum? So when four is the valid number and the four are seated, then they are a quorum. What needs to be done is for either to, to conduct an election for it is surprising. It is saddening. And that's why earlier I started that at the end of the day, what is democracy that is making politicians to behave like four children? When it is done and just said, it will have been in this people that it is the judiciary that is supposed to have saved the democracy that eventually will not be. Because people cannot decamp, and you will say that, oh, they have not decamped. Then another major thing is that there's something we call conflict of interest. There's something that, uh, when it's conflict of interest, you need to declare what is your interest. When I saw in the news that the Minister of FCC, who is an interested party, in a case before the Federal High Court in Abuja, and most likely those cases will go to the appeal court, and the Supreme Court is now allocating land for judges at the High Court, appeal court and Supreme Court, to kind of like build houses for judges. As good as the intention is, that is at the wrong time, and it's a big about what we call office of interest. Now, the office of interest will not come simultaneously in the sense that this of which is a barrister, is a lawyer, as you are now, your first address is uh, um, journalism. Maybe you studied math comm in school, you've been practicing the journalism of your life, um, all your life. So when you see a journalist, you are naturally sympathetic towards a journalist. If I see a political scientist now, then naturally I am sympathetic towards the political scientist. I will want to help the political scientist. It is natural in every occasion and in the military and the police, they call it esprit de corps. In other words, if you are driving, if you, if you don't have papers at all, and you are a military or um, even, even a, a civil defense, and you, you go to a police checkpoint, and the police ask you that, um, where is your paper? And you say, oh, esprit de corps. And they ask you, which corps? And you are able to say, oh, ministry. 
and you identify yourself as a ministry man. That means at that point in time, whatever you have done, so long as it's so long as um uh, it will it will kind of like bring down the country, it's just that you don't have paper, your sins are forgiven. So same also in the legal profession, the entry the court is a this, and you don't forget that the work of this on which is a judge at their appeal court. So the the, the husband is a lawyer, the wife is a judge at the um, appeal court. In that same Abuja, the FCC, where their case is determined, he is busy allocating land to judge it, that the land allegedly belongs to Judas Vega. And that's why you see that Nigeria is a funny country. You are allocating land that allegedly belongs to Judas Vega to judges in Abuja. So if Judas Vega is agreed, where would be Judas Vega run to? The same court that the land have been allocated. So how would Judas Vega itself get justice? So you will see that. That conflict of interest is so much that I expect that if Nigeria were to be a state country, it is even the National Judicial Council that would stop that process. But you can imagine that the allocation of the land was attended by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, my Lord Justice, take a with profound respect to her, who is aware of the different crisis in River State, and she knows that there are tens of cases in the different courts. She attended that, um, uh, uh, allocation of land, what does that signal to judges at the lower court? So, you can see that, you see, uh, 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 we, we operate a kind of a like flawed democratic system in Nigeria. You cannot, in the US, in the UK, in Australia, in Germany, or any of these civilized countries, there cannot be a monumental case like that of River State before you, uh, or the case can likely come to you in the next six months, or it was before you in the past six months, or it's likely to come to you even in the next one year. And it has allowed to be allocated to you by somebody that is one of the most interested minds in the king. That is not done. That is, and that is why you see that people are against it. But what allocation of land is not an issue to me. The most important thing to me is that I personally, I am not aware. I saw it. it was all over the place, reported even by your TV station and on you, you know, the, um, your co TV station. Your TV Africa is a reputable platform. We have a lot of reputable platforms in Nigeria that um, reported it. And this is the duty of the media. The media will not just fabricate stories that, oh, but something lawmakers, they can't be reversed. It is not possible. So, to so know that the camp, the plan, after that, to it, then. You cannot say that they are valid. It is only a recipe for crisis. And if you want to give the judgment, just a moment, sir. If you are giving the judgment for a state like maybe um, Zamfara State, it's okay. You know, uh, if you look at their contribution to the national purpose, a state like River State, when you give this kind of judgment, you are creating mm -hmm. problems. You are creating a recipe for anarchy. You okay. are trying to resurrect Militancy. And at the end of the day, okay. the democracy will be done and not dead. I, 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 I do hope that uh, uh, the resurrection of uh, militancy will not happen. Um, I, I'm also aware that um, some of the so called retired uh, or ex militants are also uh, spitting fire and brimstone and saying that. Uh, it's a ploy to remove the, the governor uh, to the detriment of the people of River State. And if that happens, then there is going to be hell let loose. But um, we do hope it will not get to that point. And let's see how it goes in the coming days. River State has said already that they were expecting this to happen. So I don't know. It is a deja vu of what happened in Lagos State, uh, where the allocation was uh, caught by the president then, uh, Lucia Guma Basenjo, and eventually the president now was the governor governor at that point and he survived for a lot of years maybe that's what river state will do as well but i don't know what will happen to the national if that happens because i don't know if they will allow their own allocations or their own uh, igr or anything to get to the federal so that uh, they will now hand them over uh, to them in patents and all that but i don't know uh, that's a matter for another day i'd like to thank you dr deji for coming on the show today and giving us your thoughts on the issue thank you so much Thanks, Robin. Mm -hmm. Thanks.
We've been talking with Dr. Omoshola Deji, a political scientist. We were looking at the fact that River State can no longer, according to the, the court ruling, uh, access their allocation, monthly allocations, because of what is happening. And the argument was that River State Governor presented a budget to a four-man uh, assembly. So the arguments are for and against, and let's see how the coming days will look like. Uh, this is where we wrap it up on the show this morning. We'd like to thank you for being a part of it and hope that you will rejoin us tomorrow for another edition of the program. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Thank you for being there.